Hi, welcome to Statistics. In this video, I'll give an overview of the topics and ideas taught in a first class in statistics in college. There's a thing that I say to all my stats students that shows the difference between stats and other math. This is what I say. There are people like me that do math for fun sometimes, but nobody does stats for fun. Stats is for serious work. Stats is used to answer a question that someone asks about the world around them. That's why in my class, I define statistics as the science and art of using data to understand the world. That question that people ask is called a research question or research hypothesis. For example, you could be wondering what percent of Americans who lost weight gained it back? Or is the average human body temperature really 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit? Or what kind of side effects does a certain vaccine have? Let's take this first question. The only way to really answer this question is to ask every single American person in the whole country who lost weight. We call that the population. We somehow find them all and ask them, did you gain the weight back? You can tell this nearly impossible to do this. And that's true in real life. It's either impossible or very expensive or sometimes unethical to gather the entire population and try things out on them just to see what happens. What's done instead is to get a smaller group of Americans who lost weight, ask them if they gained their weight back and generalize from that. That smaller group of Americans is called a sample. There are good samples and there are bad samples. Good samples are representative of the population and make our generalization legit or valid. But samples are not representative of the population. The word we use is biased. When the sample is biased, it makes our generalization invalid. Now, for something like this question, what kind of side effects does a certain vaccine have? It's usually not enough to just take a sample and give them the vaccine and see what happens. Let's say that we give it to them and they say, I got itchiness where the injection was. Well, we don't know if that itchiness is really because of the vaccine or do these people just develop itchiness no matter what it is that gets injected. Or if they say, I got stuffy nose. We don't know if it's because of the vaccine or because of seasonal allergy or something else. So instead, we need what's called a controlled experiment. There will be two samples, roughly half in an experimental group with the vaccine and roughly half in a control group with a blank injection with something with no active ingredients called the placebo. And then we compare the results. All of that is the first part of a stats class where you learn different kinds of variables that can come up in a research question, different ways to select the sample, and the good way of setting up a controlled experiment. That's called experiment design. That's the end of the first part. You have your sample or samples, and you ask them questions and measure things and give them shots. You do what you need to do and you end up collecting a bunch of data, a huge bunch of data. That's great, but dropping several inches of numbers on the laps of your boss or your client or the general public is unhelpful to anybody. Nobody but nobody wants a stack of papers in response to research question. It's better to summarize the data into something digestible, something bite-sized. That's called exploratory data analysis or the EDA, also called descriptive statistics. 
you can summarize the data in some sort of graphs. Or in a few summarized numbers, like average and such. Actually, in stats, we consider the word average to be ambiguous, so we use the word mean instead. All of that would be the second part of the course, where you learn to make different kinds of graphs and charts and to compute the summarized statistics. That second part would be exploratory data analysis or descriptive statistics. Great. Now you've got the data in raw data form or summarized or both. You're ready to generalize to the whole population. To generalize correctly, however, we need more math. That kind of math is called probability. So in part three of the class, we'll take a detour and learn probability. Different professors will cover probability slightly differently, but everyone will cover the bell curve, technically called the normal curve. Most things in life are bell-shaped. There's a mathematical reason why most things in life are bell-shaped, and you'll learn about that. However, intuitively, most things in life should be bell-shaped. There should be only few people on the high end to the right, and only a few people on the low end to the left, whereas most people are average, so they are together in the peak in the middle of the bell-shaped curve. That's why the normal curve is important in probability. After learning probability, we're mathematically ready to do generalization, or the word for it is inference. We're inferring from the sample to the population. Part four of the course, therefore, will be inferential statistics. Although it's only one part out of the four, inferential statistics will occupy more than a third and nearly a half of the time in our course. The inferential statistics we learn in this class consists of basically two kinds, confidence interval and hypothesis testing. Confidence interval is when the research question is open-ended on some value. For example, if the question is, what percent of Americans who lost weight gained it back? That means the person asking the question has no idea what the number is and they are leaving it wide open for us to answer our answer would typically be something like this. I'm 95% sure that around four out of five Americans who lost weight gained it by plus or minus 10 percentage points. Note how the answer has an air of uncertainty to it. We're not saying we're 100% sure. We're saying we're only 95% sure. And we're not giving an exact answer. We're given an answer plus or minus some percentage points. That because of this, we're taking the sample and then we infer or generalize to the whole population. There's always a risk that there are some major exceptions out there in the population, but outside our sample that we never saw, we're never aware of, and never could imagine that it's there, but it is. And therefore, inferential statistics always has a certain degree of uncertainty and always will have a chance of being wrong. And you will actually learn to work with that degree of uncertainty in a mathematical manner. That's confidence interval. Hypothesis testing, is when the researcher already has an idea of what the answer may be, and they're looking for verification. For example, they may ask, does more than 75% of people get stuffy nose as a side effect of this vaccine? That means they already have an idea that it may be more than 75%, and they're asking for a yes or no verification. And the answer could be something like, the data appear to indicate that no, not more than 75% of people get stuffy nose as a side effect of this vaccine. 
again, notice that the answer has a degree of uncertainty. We're not saying that not more than 75% of people get stuffy nose. We're saying that the data that we got indicate that. If there are some data out there that don't indicate that, we didn't get it, so we can't say anything about it. And actually, that's that. Uh, when we finish with inferential statistics, the course ends. In summary, these are the contents of the course. Number one, sampling and experiment design. Number two, exploratory data analysis or descriptive statistics. Number three, probability. And number four, inferential statistics. So is this class easier or harder compared to other math classes? Let me point out some differences. Some of them indicate that this class may be easier, but others indicate that this class may be harder. First difference is there's not a lot of hardcore math in an introductory stats class. The hardcore math comes later if you major in stats and you take more advanced courses. In this class, no. There will be some formulas and they may look a little long, but most of the time we rely on technology to just compute things for us. The second difference is this. Like I said, some of us may do math for fun, but nobody does stats for fun. We do stats to answer some research question. As a result, almost every stats problem is a word problem. Therefore, an important skill that you will need is critical reading skills. If you're already good at that, great. If you're not, don't worry. The practice that you have in this class will improve your critical reading skills. I would classify this difference as half and half, a little bit harder than other math classes. And the third difference, I would consider that this makes statistics harder than other math classes. If you look back at your previous math classes, especially if you followed an integrated math curriculum in high school, each class builds directly on top of the previous one, slowly one semester at a time. In this class, however, you start basically from scratch and you build up to something pretty advanced all within one semester. And that's a lot of knowledge squeezed into one term. You will need to take good notes. You will need to review often and you will need to practice a lot. That's that for an overview. Hope that helps. Welcome to statistics. Comment below for any questions you may have. And subscribe for more contents. Bye.